Hello and welcome to this SRC Learning Essentials series video about Provider Backbone Bridging with HVPLS. If you are not familiar with the Service Routing Certification Program, you can learn more by visiting our website at www.networks.nokia.com src. In the following presentation, we will first identify the max scaling issue in a VPLS and explain how Provider Backbone Bridging, or PBB, can be used to avoid MAC explosion and reduce MAC learning and relearning in the core. In our lab, we will then configure a Provider Backbone Bridging VPLS and verify its operation. Hierarchical VPLS, or HVPLS, solves many problems with VPLS scaling. It reduces the number of TLDP sessions, SDPs, and LSPs in the control plane and reduces packet replication and bandwidth usage in the data plane. In addition, it reduces the number of required network touches and simplifies provisioning. However, HVPLS does not address the problem of managing very large numbers of MAC addresses learned in a very large VPLS. When a customer network with 7 MDUs generates a large number of MAC addresses, say 10,000 MACs per MDU, the core PE routers could potentially have up to 70,000 MACs in their FDB. The risk with this topology is twofold. The FDB size could be exceeded, causing all unknown destination packets to flood, as well delays in MAC learning and relearning after a topology change can result in excessive flooding or loss of packets and have a potentially service affecting impact. Provider backbone bridging along with hierarchical VPLS can be used to reduce the control plane signaling and the size of the forwarding database. PBB hides the customer MAC addresses and uses provider MAC addresses referred to as backbone MAC or BMAC addresses. When PBB is used, the PE routers in the core will now only have at most 10 backbone MAC addresses in their FDB. One address for each remote PE and remote MDU, thus significantly reducing the FDB size. So what exactly is PBB? Well, PBB is an industry standard method used to interconnect multiple provider bridge networks, or PBNs, using a service provider backbone bridge network, or PBBN. To accomplish PBB, a backbone header is added to a customer's Ethernet frame. The header is used to identify the source backbone edge bridge, or BEB, at which the frame entered the PBBN, and the BEB to which the frame is destined. The BEB forwards the frame based on the backbone MAC address, and once the frame reaches the destination BEB, the PBB header is used to identify the service the frame is associated with. Note that PBB is also known as MAC and MAC because the customer MAC addresses are effectively encapsulated using the provider addresses. The IEEE model for PBB is organized around two components, the B component and the I component. The B component handles the backbone layer and is responsible for learning and forwarding based on the backbone MAC addresses. The I component defines the boundary between the customer and backbone MAC domains and is responsible for learning and forwarding based on the customer MAC addresses. It maintains a forwarding table that maps the customer MAC to an appropriate backbone MAC address and uses this information to build PBB frames to be forwarded into the PBBN. It will also identify the customer and convert the PBB frames back into customer frames. A BVPLS faces a provider network and learns only the backbone MAC addresses. When a customer frame arrives at the backbone VPLS, the provider BMAC source and destination addresses are added, effectively hiding the customer MAC addresses. The frames are then transported across the provider network based on the BMAC addresses. Note that a BVPLS can use spoke or mesh SDPs. An instance VPLS, or IVPLS, faces the customer network and learns customer MAC addresses. There is an end-to-one mapping between IVPLSs and BVPLSs, so each IVPLS is associated with only one BVPLS. 
However, multiple IVPLSs can be associated with the same BVPLS. The IVPLS is identified by a Service Instance Identifier, or an ISID, which must be globally unique across the network. Note that an IVPLS can only use spoke SDPs. Each PBB node is assigned one or more BMACs. On the Nokia 7750SR, the BMAC can be configured and by default, it is set to the chassis MAC. When a customer frame arrives at the BVPLS, the BMAC source and BMAC destination addresses are added to identify the source and destination PEs. An ITAG field that contains the ISID is also added to identify the customer VPN to which the frame is addressed. The ISID value is used at the destination PE as the demultiplexer field, similar to a VC label in a pseudowire. When binding an IVPLS to a BVPLS, the PBB encapsulation overhead must be considered. The BVPLS service MTU must be at least 18 bytes larger than the IVPLS service MTU to accommodate the PBB header. Next, we will move to our lab to complete this case study. There, routers 1 to 4 are the PE devices and routers 5 and 6 are the CE devices. The MAC addresses on the IES interfaces on routers R5 and R6 simulate customer MAC addresses. We will use PBB to reduce the FDB size and the number of MAC learning relearning in the core PEs. To accomplish this, we will first configure a BVPLS on all PE routers and assign a BMAC address where the last digit equals the router number. Next, we will configure an IVPLS on routers PE1 and PE2, which are connected to the customer network. And finally, we will examine the MAC addresses learned in the BVPLS and the IVPLS. All right. Let's start by creating the BVPLS on the PE routers using a service ID of 5. Now, to save time, I have already configured the BVPLS and all its required parts for this lab on PE3 and PE4. So, on PE1, configure service VPLS 5, customer 1B VPLS, create, and then I'll move over to PE2. Next, we need to configure the BMAC addresses. So, PBB source BMAC. And we'll use the service ID of 5, followed by the router ID, so in this case, 2. And over the PE1. Zero 05, and on this router, zero 01. Okay, so now we must connect PE1 to PE3 and PE2 to PE4 using spoke SDPs. And as mentioned earlier, the configuration is already completed on PEs 3 and 4, so we only need to configure the spokes on 1 and 2. Spoke, 3 colon 5, create, back, no shutdown to enable the service. Over to PE2, spoke, 4 colon 5, create, back, no shutdown. Now that the BVPLS is completed on all the PE routers, let's configure an IVPLS on routers PE1 and PE2 with the service ID of 100. Back, VPLS 100, customer 1, and this time it's IVPLS, create. Over to PE1, VPLS 100, IVPLS create. Next we must create the SAPs to connect PEs 1 and 2 to the CE devices. So SAP 111 colon and we'll use star because this will match all the VLAN tags on router R5. And over to PE2 and we'll use star again to match all the VLAN tags on R6. 
To finish this configuration, let's now bind IVPLS100 to BVPLS5. Back. PBB. Backbone VPLS. 5. And notice when we try to do this here, we get an error stating that the service MTU of the BVPLS is too small. So let's increment the BVPLS service MTU to accommodate for the backbone header. Configure service VPLS 5 service MTU 1532 and let's try that backbone VPLS command again. And this time it succeeds. Back, back and enable the service no shutdown. Over to PE1, configure service VPLS 5, service MTU 1532, back PBB, backbone VPLS 5, back back, and no shutdown. All right, the configuration is completed. So let's first verify the IVPLS and BVPLS services. So show service ID 100 base. And here we can see that this is the IVPLS that is associated to BVPLS ID 5. And it has a SAP of 111 colon star that is operationally up. Show service ID 5 base shows that this service is the BVPLS which has an IVPLS count of 1 and has a spoke SDP going to 101010.3 that is operationally up. Moving over to R5, we can now test the PBB configuration by pinging the broadcast network for each of the three subnets configured under IES 200. So ping 192.168.1.255, count one, and then we'll change this to 2.255. And then finally, 3.255. As expected, we get three successful responses. So let's see just how many MAC addresses are seen in the IVPLS on routers PE1 and PE2. So on PE1, show service ID 100 FDB detail, which shows six MAC addresses within the IVPLS. That is, three local customer MACs via the SAP and three remote customer MACs via the Backbone SDP. Let's see how many MAC addresses are in the BVPLS. Show service ID 5, FDB detail. And here, we only see the BMAC address of PE2 via the Spoke SDP to PE3. Heading over to PE3, And its FDB only contains the BMAC address of PE1 via the Spoke SDP and the BMAC address of PE2 via the Mesh SDP. So these results show that PBB reduces the size of the FDB in the core PEs. I hope you enjoyed this video on PBB with HVPLS. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Content for this video was adapted from the Nokia Virtual Private LAN Services course. You can access the complete course via any of the three learning formats shown on this page, as well as get remote private access to a service router lab to complete the course lab exercises. If you are interested in obtaining an SRC certification, this table identifies the recommended courses and required exams for each of the five available certifications in the program.